coming up on this episode of Design to the Nines. I'm going to show you how I took some tuna cans, a couple of cookie sheets, and dog chains from the Dollar Tree and built this designer knockoff chandelier for a fraction of the cost using some power tools for my Girls Can Use Power Tools Challenge. If that sounds good to you, stay tuned. Welcome to Design to the Nines. I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome to my channel. If you like learning about all things DIY and home decor, then you're in the right place, and I'd ask you to consider subscribing to my channel below and turning the notifications on because I post weekly tutorials on all of these topics. This week's episode I've been promoting for about a month now, and I am just over the moon excited about it. And that is my Girls Can Use Power Tools Challenge, and it is in the attempt to empower women to feel comfortable using power tools and to use them more and my first co-host is my good friend Lisa Burningham her channel's amazing she does all kinds of party ideas home decor and it's a very fun channel I know you're gonna love I'm gonna put her link below in the description box make sure once you're done watching this video and Lisa's video to check out all of the videos on the playlist because I've got a lot of really talented and amazing women participating in this challenge and if you've missed it this month make sure you check back with us it will be on the last Monday of every month going forward so I am so excited about that. Before I get started on my project, I wanted to tell you kind of how this whole challenge came to be. A couple of months ago, I went into the store to buy a new saw. And as I was checking out, I bought an extended warranty. Well, my husband was with me. He kind of took off with it to um, put it in the car. And the cashier kept saying to me, well, if your husband wants to cash in anything with the warranty, he can do this, he can do that. And I was like, the saw's for me. <laughs> and so I just thought that was funny that she, you know, automatically assumed that the saw was for my husband. And I'm like, you know, girls can use power tools too. That's how this challenge came to be. I wanted to empower other women to get out there and use power tools a little bit more, not be so scared of them. That is a long introduction. Um, so let's get into the project. So if you two think that girls should be using power tools more, put girl power down in the comment section below. For my project today, I am going to be knocking off again um, I have a designer item. This time it's from Ballard Designs. I found a beautiful chandelier that was $529 and I really loved it, but I wanted to see if I can do it for a lot less. I'm gonna be using some really interesting items. I think you might even actually question my sanity a little bit when I, I pull out some of the items that I'm gonna use. Um, but that's what you gotta do is you gotta get creative. You gotta think outside of the box, but I promise you that they're gonna work and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you three interesting things that I'm using. The first is I'm gonna be using some cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree. I think they're gonna really work for a part of our project. And then I'm using three of these six foot dog tie out cables. So like a dog chain from the Dollar Tree again. And so, and then finally, and this is a little bit odd. I am using eight tuna cans, like empty tuna cans. So we've had a lot of tuna sandwiches recently. Okay, so we're gonna start by building the frame of the chandelier first. And I picked up three of these 36 inch long, one and a half by one and a half inch poplar pieces of lumber from Home Depot. We are gonna keep two of them the original length and then we are gonna take the third one and cut it directly in half. We're gonna just go ahead and mark that and make that cut now. So a couple quick safety tips. Normally I have some clear protective eyewear for my saw. I couldn't find them, so we're gonna make do with my sunglasses, but that's just to prevent any sawdust from getting in your eyes. In between each use, I always unplug it because I have little people around and I just don't want them accidentally, you know, turning it on like that and hurting themselves even if I'm gonna only be away from it for just a second. We're gonna be building the frame for the chandelier. I didn't want anything exposed like in the way of nails or anything on the end. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna insert dowels inside the joint to keep it all nice and put together. We're gonna take the one of the long ones and we are going to 
take a nail and put it in about the center. Tap it into place, make sure it's nice and level. And then you take some wire clippers and you clip off the head of the nail so then it's kind of sharp. And then we're gonna line it up on this table. And then we take our hammer and tap it into place. And what that's gonna do is make a mark where your starting hole should be. And then we can just take this nail and pull it out. So now you've got a, a starting point for each joint. Drill nice and straight. And then we do the same thing to this. So roughly this is gonna work. We're probably gonna need to do a little sanding around the joints, but that's okay. Before we glue this together and finalize it, then you're just gonna add some wood glue in the holes and if a little bit gets through, that's okay because then it will help strengthen that joint. For a much tighter joint, I highly recommend using a clamp. So I've let my frame dry overnight, so I'm gonna take off the clamp now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand the frame because we want a nice um, smooth surface. Using a sander makes it so much faster. <laughs> So I decided to move the party inside um, because I didn't know how the humidity and heat would work with the stains. I'm doing it in our guest bathroom because this is an area that is not getting used right now and then I can also turn on the fans for circulation and all of that. I'm gonna put on some gloves to protect my fancy manicure that I still don't have. <laughs> no, I'm just doing this because it's gonna get messy and I don't want to have a stain all over my hands. And then I've got a cast off sock that its partner probably got eaten by my dryer, like so many socks do. Just gonna dunk my hand in the stain and I'm just using a gel stain because I thought it would work a little bit better and give us a nice thick coat. And that is going on very dark, which is kind of good because that's kind of what I wanted. If you like this t-shirt and you want a chance to get it for free, stick with me to the very end and I will tell you how you can do it. The next step in the process is creating the iron strapping that was on the wood frame. And you're gonna need protective gloves for this step because you're gonna be exposed to some sharp edges and it's really important to protect your hands so you don't get cuts. They're not very expensive at all and definitely worth it. Then you're gonna take your tin snips and cut off the lip of the cookie sheet, leaving just the bottom part. Then you're gonna take that part and cut two and a half inch strips. Then you are ready to spray paint, which we will just spray paint all of the tuna cans anything that's going to be metal we're going to use the leftover spray paint from my project last week and spray everything a nice flat iron looking black so i've let everything dry for several hours and hopefully it is all dry enough to do my next step we're going to start with the iron the iron <laughs> the pretend iron um, strapping that was made from cookie sheets and we've sprayed it in that um, outdoor flashing that black is I'm going to start on the inside so the rough side is right underneath the tuna can <laughs> tuna can oh my goodness and so we're gonna just fold it around and get it on there and it should just bend really nicely and then we're going to put a little pressure and pull it up and bend it all the way around and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a little mark here and then i'm going to grab my tin snips that i left inside so i'm going to go grab those and i'm going to take this off we are going to trim it to fit to kind of keep everything in place I'm gonna take my tuna can and I've kind of punched a little hole in this, set this on top. So I'm gonna drill pilot. So that is set. Then I'm gonna switch my tip to a traditional tip. I'm just using drywall screws. I had them on hand. You could probably use whatever you want. And then we are gonna screw this right into place. Look at that. So that is on there good. That will help the fake iron strap to stay in place good. And we'll do that all the way along. So you can see right here, I have a little bit of an issue and I did know that this was gonna happen. 
and what it is is it's just where this seam is meeting up and I've got some you know E6000 on there but it doesn't want to stay down because it wants to bend out so my solution for this and it's also kind of an aesthetic thing as well on the um, original there's some nail heads and I just am going to I took these thumbtacks and I sprayed them the same color so I press those in and not only does that hold it into place but it adds kind of an aesthetic as well so and anywhere that I'm scratching on this ironwork I'm planning on going back in and touching up Next, I drill pilot holes into the wooden round in a square shape for the hooks that will hold the chain supports. Then I place another thumbtack in the center for an added decorative touch. So on the edges, I come in two and a half by three quarters. We're gonna pre-drill the screws for the hooks where we're gonna attach our cables. All right, so I'm getting ready to hang my light fixture and I had my husband come out earlier and help me mark where we were gonna need to put it because it was kind of a two person job because we had to kind of center in between the two light fixtures, you can kind of see. Um, and apparently he did not want me to miss where he marked. So I need to determine whether or not there's a stud up there so i'm going to use a stud finder that would be most ideal because obviously that would be the most secure um, if not i do have a toggle that i can put into the drywall which would support up to 50 pounds worth of weight which should be more than plenty because my light fixture is nowhere near that um, so let's go see if there's a stud there's a stud in my house let's see if there's a stud up there no stud <laughs> all right so we're going to be using the toggle so I wanted to show you before I hung it that I attached the cables to the hooks right here and over here. And so on all corners, and then I connected it right there as well. So one of the reasons I had Lisa come over, other than the fact that I like to hang out with her, she's pretty much awesome, um, but is I need help hanging my chandelier. It's really kind of a two-person job, so yes. if you wouldn't mind helping me, we'll get Let's this up. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yay. Check out her channel, guys. So my project is done, it's hung. I am so thrilled with how it turned out. I feel like it's a really good dupe and a really good knockoff of the Ballard design. My version came in at around $60. There is a way to do it for about half the cost and that would include switching out the candles for some from the Dollar Tree. This is the Dollar Tree version and this is my version. Now, the reason I went with these candles is because the Dollar Tree one, you would have to manually turn on each and every time you use it. You have to get up and, and switch that out. My version, you actually can turn on with a remote and off with a remote. So it's really cool. They're a little bit beefier. I'm really glad I spent the extra money, but if you're looking for a little bit more budget friendly solution, switch out for the Dollar Tree candles. If you wanted to participate in this challenge and you either don't have a YouTube channel or you just couldn't make it happen this month, there's still a way for you to participate. Just go over to Instagram, post a picture of yourself with your favorite power tool with the hashtag girls can use power tools. We will be selecting someone from that group to get a free t-shirt just like this one. <laughs> so if you want a chance to do that, or if you just want to participate in the fun, then go to Instagram and do that as well. If you don't want to do that, you can also just comment on your favorite power tool in the comment section below. And we will also be selecting somebody from the comments 
as well. Lots of ways to participate and really support and empower women to use power tools because we can use them too, right? It's so much fun. I can't even tell you the first time I used a nail gun. I was like, where has this been my entire life? I hope you learned something today. I hope you got some inspiration. And I hope that you could join me each and every week for all of my fun adventures in DIY and decor. More dupes, more decor, more DIY. I've got you covered. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again next week.